Light typically travels in a straight path when it's not obstructed by any materials. However, when a material blocks the path of light, two things happen. A, pr a fraction of the beam is transmitted through the material, and we refer to this as refraction. Another part of the beam is reflected back in the direction it came from. So in the schematic diagram here, we have an incoming light beam, which we refer to as the incident beam, and it comes in at some theta 1. And as I said previously, part of the beam is reflected, and it's reflected at the same angle in which it came from. And these angles are with respect to the vertical of the surface. Now another portion of the beam is transmitted or refracted. But the angle in which it's refracted is dictated by Snell's law, which is the law of refraction. Snell's law tells us that the incident beam, which has an index of refraction of N1, times sine of the incident angle, is equal to N2, which is the index of refraction of the material, times sine of the refracted angle, theta 2. The index of refraction is just a ratio of the speed of light and vacuum divided by the speed of light and material. Since light travels at a slower speed in the material, it makes sense that we have an index of refraction somewhere greater than 1. And in vacuum, the index of refraction is 1. And in air, it's about 1 as well. So let's see how this law applies to a real live demonstration. OK, in this example, we have some material, which has some index of refraction. And we have an incoming laser beam. I'm shining the laser beam at 90 degrees from the surface, or what we refer to as normal incidence. And as you can see, the beam travels in a straight path. And it gets refracted through the material also in a straight path. What's interesting is when I move the laser beam at some slight angle so that the incident beam is striking the interface at some angle. Now you can see that we have two emerging beams from the incident. We have one reflected beam at the sa same angle of a reflection as the incident beam. And then you see the beam bends when it strikes the top interface. And it bends in a way such that the refracted beam is bent towards the vertical. Now you, you can also see that the transmitted beam goes through the material and strikes the bottom surface. And at the bottom surface, you again see two emerging beams. You have a reflected beam, and you also have a refracted beam. But this time, since the beam is coming from a material into air, the refracted beam into air is being bent away from the vertical. So, and I can change the angle of incidence in several angles, and you can see that the refracted beam inside responds accordingly to Snell's law. When the beam is going from the material to air, you see that there is some transmitted beam to air. But because the transmitted beam to air is bending far away from the vertical, there's going to be some angle, and you can see it more clearly if I come in from the side here, there's going to be some angle in which there will be no transmitted beam to the air. So if you see on the top surface, there's no transmitted beam, and the beam is entirely reflected back into the material. And this process is known as total internal reflection.